want to talk about the NFC kind of playoff predict- predictions, uh, a little bit about what the NFC could shape out to be. Because if you look at the NFC compared to the AFC, it's not even close. The AFC is so much better. Um, and I think that's why we have these high expectations for the 49ers, because you look around the league and you go, okay, who are the top dogs in the NFC? I think you can say the Buccaneers with a lot of confidence. I think, of course, you can say the Rams with a lot of confidence. I think it stops after there. I think those are your tier one teams. And I think you have a bunch of other teams kind of vying for the spots below. And let's not let's not forget to mention the Bucks and the Rams are already dealing with a bunch of injury problems. So they, like a couple injuries from both those teams and like, okay, it looks a lot different, the landscape of the NFC. But Aiden, if you were going to kind of go through all of the NFC teams, who do you think are the playoff contenders? And then who would be like the, the teams that you are, are slotting to win each division and then kind of your wild card teams? Yeah. Um, I guess I'll just go through each each division uh, and talk about each team really, really quickly. I think the Bears are going to be horrible. Um, I think Fields is in a horrible situation, um, and he's really been dealt. Darnell Mooney as his only real receiver. Uh, horrible offensive line. Coaching staff is uh, questionable at, at, at best. Um so I think they're going to be horrible. Lions, I think, will take a step forward. I like Dan Campbell. Uh, if, if you watch Hard Knocks, it's hard not to root for them. Uh, I think that they're going to surprise some people. They'll win seven games. They'll, they'll take a step forward. And once they figure out quarterback, um, that could be a, a team on, on the rise. Uh, I think the Packers take a bit of a step back, but I think they still win that division. I never want to bet against Aaron Rodgers. He's been throwing to um, Alan Lazard and – Romeo dubs this 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 offseason, but um, I think he's he's still going to pull it off. Uh, but I think the Vikings will make the playoffs as a wild card team. Um, I think they'll take a bit of a step forward, and they they could win that that division over the Packers. But I never want to bet against Aaron Rodgers. So I'd say that the NFC North has two playoff teams: the Packers and the the, the Vikings. Um, Cowboys are going to be solid again. They're able to keep both both coordinators, which I think was big for them, given that Mike McCarthy is. Um, not perfect as a head coach. So to keep both the offensive coordinator and, and defensive coordinator, I think is important for them. I think they're going to be fine. Uh, Giants going to rebuild. I think Saquon's going to have a good year, but um, the rest of that roster is not awesome. Uh, Eagles, Jalen Hurts is another guy who gets slandered, I think, a little bit too much. Um, he had a really good year last year, sort of quietly, but the Eagles are still thinking about moving on and he's been like exactly who you thought he, he was. He's improved every year. Um, and he's not perfect, but, uh, he's a capable starter. He'll make the playoffs. I could see them as another wild card team, uh, where the Cowboys, uh, make the playoffs and the Eagles are a wild card. Um, commanders. Eh. I mean, I, I think Sam Howell starts for them by probably week eight. Um, I don't think Wentz is fantastic and Howell looked really good during, during the preseason and they have a rough first start to their schedule. So if they start two and five, you're not going to want to turn the keys over to Heineke. You're going to see what, what you got in this rookie. Um, so I think that could, I mean, that's, it's for, for them, it's a sort of see what, what they got year. Um, but I don't think they're going to be awesome. Falcons. Um, moving on to the NFC South, it just sucks to be the the Falcons right now. I, I can't believe that Ridley got a full year suspension and Watson only gets 11 games. That's ridiculous. Um, but they have a lot of holes. Uh, defense is bad. Um, and Mariota, I guess this is his last opportunity to prove that he's a capable starter, but he's got Desmond Ritter breathing down his neck. A lot of people are, are high on, on him. I don't think they're going to be that good. Um, but the NFC South, the other three teams, I think are all going to be solid. Um, I think the Panthers are going to surprise some people this year. Um, they have a quietly a pretty decent defense. Uh, they've been almost, a t- I think they've been a top 10 defense for the past two, three years. Uh, and with a horrible offense, um, that's pretty impressive. So if McCaffrey stays healthy, obviously that's a big if. Um, and if Baker just plays solid quarterback play, I could see them sneaking into the playoffs as a wild card team. Um, Saints, I think are in a very similar boat. Winston needs to show that he can do it. But again, if Michael Thomas is, is healthy and I like Chris Olave a lot, they have weapons, Kamara. Uh, I don't think he's going to get suspended. It's kind of weird, but I don't think he's going to get suspended. Um, 
they have a good offense. I don't really know what to expect from Dennis Allen in terms of changes in offensive scheme. Um, obviously, with Sean Payton gone, that offense is going to change. But their their defense was pretty good last year. Um, I think that they'll be solid again. I think that they'll be a, a tough out. Um, the Bucks. I don't expect the Bucks to be as good this year as they were in the over the past couple years. Uh, I think Brady's still going to get his, but they have major, major question marks up up front um, in in terms of offensive line. Uh, they already lost Ryan Jensen for the year. I think uh, their starting center, who did a ton of stuff for them, uh, I think they let a, another starter go in free agency to the Bengals. Um, but like they have some question marks up front, and when you have a forty-five year old quarterback, that's not where you want to have question marks. So uh, they'll they'll be solid. They'll 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 make the playoffs, but um, I don't think that they're going to be world world beaters like like they were. Over the past couple years, Cardinals moving on the NFC West. Goodness, I don't know what to say. Like, you you give Kyler Murray this giant contract, which you kind of had to do, but it just gets blown out of proportion, and you get a ton of backlash about he doesn't study the playbook, and you put a clause in there. It just looks weird. Kingsbury, I don't like at all. I don't think he's a starting, or I don't I don't think that he's a head coach in in the the league. I think he'd be really good as an OC. Um, but I just don't, don't trust them at all. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see their, their hard knocks, uh, in, in season portion. Uh, and I think Hopkins being suspended for what the first six weeks is going to hurt them. Uh, and they're going to, they've, they've always been a fast starter and fall apart down, down the stretch team, but without Hopkins, I think they could start slow and finish slow. Um, so I don't think they're going to be fantastic. Uh, but I mean, they have so many weapons, I think. Uh, they'll win eight, nine games, but mm, I'm I'm not expecting them to really, really compete for the playoffs. Rams, the Stafford stuff is weird. The shoulder stuff is weird. The elbow, um, it's it's just very strange. And if and if he goes down, they quietly lost a lot of pieces on the offensive line and on the defense. Um, Aaron Donald could be getting suspended for smacking that that dude with a helmet in his hand. Again, very very strange. Um, so like I, the, they, they are the defending world champions. They beat the Niners in, in the playoffs last year. So I can't say that, that the Niners are definitively better, but a lot of weird stuff going on. And if the, the Bucks and, and Rams are the two teams that, um, were good last year and are good going into this year, they have major question marks. Uh, so do the Niners, obviously quarterback, uh, chief among them, but, the rest of the roster is so good, and we're going to run the ball, which I'm so excited for. Uh, and to sort of wrap it up, the Seahawks going to be really, really bad. Um, I think them and the Bears are probably the two worst teams in the league. Um, and they have – people are, are going to talk a lot about quarterback uh, and how they don't really have a stable quarterback, but they lost Bobby Wagner, and they still I, – I think they picked a, a running back in the second round. I don't really know what, what you're you're doing there. Even if Kenneth Walker's a hit, like you're going to put him behind that horrible offensive line that Russell Wilson ran away from for the last five years. Um, don't really understand that pick, I guess, going best player available, but uh, they're not going to be really any good. And I think Pete Carroll is reaching kind of the end. Uh, he's got two, three years left. And if, if they don't hit on a quarterback soon, I could see him uh, leaving similar to how he did at USC where he kind of left a mess. I could see him doing that again. Um, so I guess to summarize Packers, Vikings, Cowboys, Eagles, Panthers, Saints, Bucks, Rams, Niners are sort of your playoff contenders. Um, and there could be major surprises. Uh, obviously injuries can change a lot, but, um, I'd say that the, the Panthers are sort of that, that sleeper team that I think their Vegas win total is six games. I could see them winning 10 games. Um, I like the, the over there. Uh, but they obviously need a lot of things to go right. They need McCaffrey to stay healthy, and they need Baker to prove that uh, he's on a bit of a, of a revenge tour. Um, but I'd say that that's sort of my NFC takeaways, and the conference is not that good. If if the Niners are not a top three seed, I would be very very surprised. And and that would th- that would mean that they're winning the division too, which means that, that that'd be big. Um, but yeah, I mean looking at looking at the overall NFC, I, I have basically the exact same teams as like as you do I, I don't think i think the only other team that i would kind of add that you didn't mention right now um 
probably the Saints. But then the Saints just traded their their left tackle just is out for the season. Um, the rookie left tackle that they were going to kind of bank on. MT is a massive question mark. Kamara's been hurt in the last few years, and we don't know what the offense is going to look like without Sean Payton. Um, and then you go, okay, and then you just trade your top corner to another team that's going to be contending with you probably for a wild card spot. So the Saints are kind of in flux now. Um, it's not good, dude. The NFC is not good. So I went through and I picked I picked my four division winners. Uh, I have Cowboys, Rams, Vikings, not super confident with that, um, and Bucks. So I'll go through each division and kind of see like what I'm looking at in terms of like, okay, who can actually like be a comp- contender. Um, I'll start with the NFC East. I have the Cowboys there. Like, I think the Cowboys honestly took a step back this offseason. I think losing Amari Cooper is a bigger deal than most people are letting on. Mm-hmm. Um, big time question marks with my uh, with uh, Gallup there. Um, but I still think they're probably the best team. Don't think they have the best roster. I'll tell you that right now. I think the Eagles have the best roster, and I don't really think it's close. The Eagles have built an absurd team, but they have a limited quarterback. Still, they have an absurd team. They have an absurd roster. So I think the Eagles are a playoff team. I think you have two playoff teams here. I would not be surprised at all if the Eagles won the division. I'm just not. And I feel like Jalen Hurts, it's so weird. Like, it's like, oh, like, how good is he? How good? Like, I feel like it's obvious. Like, we know who Jalen Hurts is, and people, like, there's so many, like, question marks and stuff. It's like, look, he doesn't have a lot of arm strength, doesn't have a lot of arm talent. He's a dynamic runner, and he's a smart player. He's conserved with the ball. He doesn't really push it downfield. Um, the big reason why I like them to take a step up, and they made the playoffs last year too, but a big reason I like them to make to take a big step is that they have, they're have they legit too deep at defensive line at every single position. Their, their backup defensive line is – probably a starting defensive line on half of the teams in the NFL. It is stupid deep. And then they add Garner Johnson, who was one of the better corners in the league last year. He was awesome for the saints for nothing. And then they add AJ Brown, dude, AJ Brown. I just brought up like how Jalen hurts is limited. If you were going to add any wide receiver, it would probably be maybe CD lamb just because they have the, the chemistry there, but AJ Brown running slants across the middle with Jalen Hurts and that run game and that offensive line, it's going to be dangerous. R- RPO, RPO galore right there for that team. I mean, they're going to run that so much. Um, if you're a linebacker, you have your work cut out for you every single week. So, I mean, as a Niner fan, I like the the matchup against the Niners, but and maybe like the Bucks too. But some of these teams that don't have strong linebackers are going to get shredded by the Eagles. It's going to be tough. Um, so I think you're a little bit limited at quarterback, but I think like you have like the best like guys around him for him to flourish. So. I think they are a playoff team. I think you have two playoff teams there. Um, and then I'll go to the North. I mean, oh, okay. One other team I want, I, I'll, I'll bring up the Giants and the Commanders real quick. I, I think the Commanders could be all right. I don't think Sam Howell is going to take over. I will tell you that, Aiden. I think that Wentz is okay. But Wentz could just get hurt. So then there's your option right there where Howell takes over. Um, the Commanders are, I think they could take a step forward. I don't know if they're quite there. I feel like they're like, almost like a team that like they'll be like in the hunt, but I don't know if they'll ever like really be that legit. Um, and then I kind of, I'm very intrigued to see what the giants look like, because I believe in like what they're kind of building in terms of their coaching staff and stuff. I thought Daniel Jones took a big step last year, but they're, they have all this money in receiver, but the guys can't stay healthy. Um, Kadarius Tony's not been healthy. Kenny Galladay's not been healthy. Like, okay, your offensive line sucks. And then you've lost a lot of your defensive pieces over the past couple of years where a couple of years ago, they had a pretty solid defense. Um, so I'm not super sold on the Giants this year, but I do like them in like maybe like two to three years. I think they'll be a lot better. Um, so I don't really think they're gonna, those teams are going to be able to make that much of a noise. Maybe the commanders though. Um, in the North, the Bears are going to suck. I love Justin Fields. I think Justin Fields is going to be a great quarterback in the NFL. Why did the Bears pick him? Did they just not want him to have a good career? They're like, oh, we're going to take you. We're going to give you no offensive line, no weapons. You're going to be in the worst spot of like any quarterback that I can think of in a long time that's been drafted by it. I mean, maybe, I guess, Trevor Lawrence, right? Those are the two teams. Um, I have no idea why they took Justin Fields. They suck. They're terrible, and now they have a guy that I think is a really good quarterback, but we're not going to see him put up numbers. We're not going to see them win games. Um, the Lions, the Lions will take a step forward, but I don't think they're a playoff team. I think they might like flirt around like seven wins, eight wins, something like that. Um, Vikings, Vikings are stacked. Uh, their defense is old. That's the question mark there. They have some question marks among the offensive line. They have a few guys that are like younger interior offensive linemen. They're going to be starting for them. Um, but anytime you have an offense that has, I get that everyone hates Kirk cousins, but you have a 
solid quarterback in Kirk Cousins. And it's like, okay, well, who does he have as a supporting cast? Oh, that's right. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and Dalvin Cook. That's as good as it gets in terms of weapons. So I think that they should they should be able to make some noise. Could they miss the playoffs? Totally, but I think that they're like up there. Um, the Packers roster took a big hit losing Devontae Adams and a couple guys on defense. Um, but I still think that, you know, you have Aaron Rodgers, you're going to be in the mix and you're going to be playing the bears twice a year, the lions twice a year. Um, so that's probably four dubs right there. So I don't know. I think that the Packers may maybe take a step back, but I still think they're a playoff team. So two playoff teams in that division. Um, then I go to the NFC South and probably, probably just one. The Falcons are, I think the Falcons are actually the worst team in the league. And I will say this. The Falcons should do everything they can to get the number one pick uh, to take Bryce Young because their receivers next year, and I know this is going to be a hot take, next year they may have the best receiving core in the NFL. And I know they're good teams. You have Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and Calvin Ridley as your top three. That is, Calvin Ridley is your three. That's nuts. So I, I think that they're in full tank mode. I think they should just suck this year. Um, I don't have faith in Mariota, and especially that defense. That defense is so bad. Um, the Panthers, I think everything you said about the Panthers is accurate. In terms of over-under, absolutely pound the over. Christian McCaffrey has missed a lot of time, but, dude, he's he's one of the most dynamic players in the league. He's ridiculous. Um, you add Baker Mayfield in there, that's a significant upgrade. Um, you have some adjustments to your coaching staff. Um, Joe Brady last year could not hang in the NFL. That was very clear. Um, so I think you see big steps from them. I don't know if they make the playoffs, but they could be in the mix. Um, and then the saints, I, I talked about them a little bit already. Like it's just, there's a lot of question marks all of a sudden where heading into the year, I was like, yeah, saints are saints are number two in the division and they could kind of flirt with the bucks for the number one spot, but it's getting a little bit dicey there. So I, I want to see what it looked like. What does a roster look like week six or week eight? I think that'll kind of give you a, a better understanding because last year they, Dude, last year they would have made the playoffs over the Niners if Jameis doesn't go down. It would they would have ran away with it. It wouldn't have been close. Um, so big question marks there. And then the Bucks, it's hard because you look at parts of the roster. It's like all right, you're gonna have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Julio Jones, um, and Tom Brady and Uncle Lenny, right? You got all these these stacked guys. And then the offensive line sucks. There's a couple of question marks in terms of defensive backs, but I think that they might be the number one seed still. Um, it's just it's just hard with some of the injuries that have kind of started to pile up for them in terms of their offensive line. Um, and then we go to the NFC West. So I'll say one playoff team from that division, but two kind of in the hunt. NFC West, I think you got the Rams and the Niners making the playoffs. I don't know who wins the division. I think that if the Rams were to take a step back, it would be it would be completely because of injury. But I could see it happening because they are thin. They do have question marks. Matthew Stafford has an elbow, like a pitching elbow injury. That is super, super scary for the, for Rams fans. Um, and then the Niners, obviously, you have a, a first year starter at quarterback, so that's the big red flag there. Still, those are two of the better overall rosters in the NFC. Um, so I'm having both of them make the playoffs. If the Cardinals can win in December, then yeah, they could be talked about. But until Cliff Kingsbury wins like two games after what is it, Week 12, I can't take them seriously. Like, I'm sorry. They had maybe the strangest offseason of any team. Your your quarterback has a problem of playing Call of Duty? What? <laughs> you, you don't hear that stuff. So I'm going to have to sell their stock, but I also think that their roster got worse. They lost Chandler Jones, who is an amazing pass rusher. Um, I'm just not really sold on the Cardinals anymore. Like It's been too many years of like, oh, this is, this is their year. This is their year. They're going to be okay. They're going to be good early on in the season, and they're probably going to fall off, and injuries are going to hurt them a lot because they're also quite a bit of an older team. They don't have DeAndre Hopkins for the first eight games. like So not the best. I think they're around a 500 team that's kind of another team in the hunt. And then you brought the Seahawks. The Seahawks suck. I mean, the Seahawks are going to be terrible. Um, unless – I mean, I saw some people saying, like, oh, they're going to be able to run the ball. They're going to be able to do this. I don't think we're understanding how big of a difference Russell Wilson makes for your team. That's going to be night and day. Like, I think it's going to be a big wake up call when you win three to four games this year. And it's like, oh, this team does suck. Russell Wilson is over in Denver winning like 12, 13 games in the best division that I've ever seen in football in the, in the AFC West. But I don't know. I think it's going to be a big wake up call for everyone in Seattle. Kind of like, yo, this is really what a bottom out looks like. And Seahawks fans, if you're listening to this, we had the bottom out a couple years ago. So it's going to even out. I mean, it's not like the 49er fans haven't had to, had to, haven't had to deal with that. Um, in the Jimmy Tom school years. Uh, so I don't know. I, I think that's where I'm at. I think your playoff teams, 
I got Cowboys winning the division, Rams winning the division. I'm going to change it. Packers winning the division, um, Bucks, and then my playoff teams will probably be the Vikings, the Niners, and the Eagles. But there's other teams that can make a run, and AFC, the NFC is kind of wide open for a lot of spots. But I think the Niners are super legit. I think if they don't make the playoffs, it's a massive disappointment. Even if Trey Lance looks terrible, I still think they should make the playoffs. Um, but, yeah, that's probably all I have. So, Aiden, any, anything else on the NFC? No, I think you hit it right on the head. Um, I mean, I think 10 and 7 gets you in. Um, and even if the Niners don't win the division, I think it's pretty clear that they're a top three team roster wise at this moment right now uh, behind the Bucks and Rams, just because we've seen them have success over the past few years. But I mean, you could make a case. Every team in the NFC has major, major question marks um, going into this year. Then the Niners are one of them. But um, if if there's going to be a year to have a first year starter and have question marks at quarterback, this is probably the year. Um, so, I mean, we're, we'll still, we're still waiting for Brady to fall off a cliff. I don't believe it'll ever happen. I guess he's, he's undefeated against father time. I'm picking him in, in fantasy drafts cause he's going like the 13th round, uh, pick him up all day. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's a really exciting time to be a 49er fan and say, say the Niners exceed expectations this year, win 13 games. Like you could run this conference for the next five five years. Like every like the Bucks and Rams are both old. Uh, Stafford major question marks around that that elbow, and he's what thirty five. Brady's forty five. Uh, this is probably if not his last year, his last two years. Um, and then everybody else, like there's not another um, confirmed really good quarterback. Like Rogers is 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 old. There's there's not a good young quarterback. Uh, that we know is is good and in a good situation um, in this entire conference. So if Lance does pan out, like you could be looking at the Niners doing similar to what the Chiefs have done over the past couple of years. Um, and I don't even think Lance needs to be that good. Um, so super exciting time. And uh, I, I, I just can't wait for week one against the Bears, which hopefully will be a good barometer of how the D season goes. Because if somehow we lose to the bears. I think everything that we just said sort of goes in, in the, the tank. So um, super excited to see it kicked off. Uh, watch, watch Trey uh, and watch us run the damn ball, which I always love to see. Yeah. I'm, I'm there with you, man. And yeah, I, I also, I'll say this dude week one of the NFL is absolutely terrifying because like though there's like five, five games every year where it's like, how did that team win? Like what? That, like if you look at it on paper, you're like, no, no, no there's like that zero percent chance the team's gonna win. So no, I'm actually kind of terrified for that. Um, just like, oh, immediate trap game against the Bears, and the Bears are bad. So yeah, we'll see how it plays out. But I, I am pumped for this season. I, I think the stuff you brought up about the young quarterbacks, dude. Who is it? Who are the young quarterbacks? Hurts, Fields, Kyler. Those are the three. Like those are the three guys. And like I'm not really sold on on Hurts and Fields is in a horrible situation. Kyler, we just talked about the problems that Kyler's had. So, like, no, it, it is true. Like, this is – there's a lot of positive outlook for the 49ers moving forward. And, you know, a lot of these teams are older, um, and we're going to see how they play out. But I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We only got a, we only got a few more days till, till NFL kick, kicks off. So, things can do it, though, for this episode. Really long one. Um, planning to do probably a little bit longer episode just because we're only going to be recording one time a week um, throughout the season. But – Looking forward to, to pumping out Niners content and, and a little bit of NFL content as well. But I think it's going to do it. So thank you guys all for listening. And we'll be back next week.